third of our graphics talks. And this one here, it's gonna be very short. We'll have a, a look at the use of text and displaying text within games. It's an important element because quite often within the game we will want to display either numerical information, uh, like a score or a countdown, or textual information uh, to the, the user. So we'll have a very brief look at a few of the factors that, um, that apply here. So we'll start off first of all by looking at the process of actually drawing text. Uh, there are different ways of doing it. There are some that are, are suited to a game, there's some that are not suited to a game. In terms of one that isn't suited, and this is maybe the, the, the sort of approach you would imagine more for uh, like a word processor. So we're all familiar with the notion of a font, and if you change the font, it changes how the character looks. And again, we're all familiar with the notion that font sizes can change, and you make it bigger and smaller and shrink it and so on. So when we think about fonts, effectively, we are talking about glyphs, character glyphs, character shapes where each shape is described in terms of a number of line and curve segments. Um, and that's nice because that gives you a, a size independent ways of, of specifying what the font looks like. And you can render it big, you can render it small. So within a word processor, whenever fonts are being displayed, you have your, for example, your true type font, you'll interpret the glyphs for it, you'll draw out the curves, you'll fill the bits in. And it's actually a fairly expensive operation uh, to, to manage. Now, part of the problem we have here that wouldn't make this overly suited to a game is that in a game you are drawing and redrawing and redrawing the screen and you're doing this maybe 50, 60 times a second, so it's quite interactive. So we definitely want to avoid a situation where uh, we spend a lot of effort sculpting a lovely um, glyph on the screen and, and filling it in. And then a 50th of a second later, we do exactly the same process again. So that would be quite inefficient. So how do we get around this then for a game? It comes into the use of what's known as bitmap fonts. And actually, before computers became more powerful, this, this is fairly common in terms of how uh, fonts were represented effectively you would have these pre-rendered at a fixed resolution so a, a bitmap uh, in, in all essence and if you wanted to draw out a character you would go along to the region of the bitmap that corresponds to that character and you would draw out that particular image and if you wanted to support different resolutions you could have your uh, your, your sprite sheet um, at different resolutions corresponding to it now that's fast because effectively there, we're not generating and sculpting uh, the character. It's been done before. All we're doing is we're drawing a bitmap uh, from one part to another part. Very fast, very efficient. So this is something that works well uh, for games. A couple of, I mean, the advantage is the speed. Uh, it does also mean that because we're using an image, we can have quite fancy um, fonts if we want to. And there's a load of very fancy fonts online. So again, that, that gives you a bit more flexibility turning in with whatever visual style you're using in your game. Quite often how these things are, are managed is that um, whenever you're building your game, uh, you'll know the resolution you're targeting your game at. So you can take a, a normal font, you can render it then to a bitmap, and effectively you can use that bitmap uh, in, in your game to support whatever font size you are. Are targeting. All of this generally happens under the, the surface, so if we're talking about basic Android when we're drawing text out, uh, we can just use the ordinary graphics functions for doing that and it will be quite fast and sufficiently accelerated. If we want to go and use our own custom bitmap font, again we can do that. So one little uh, worked example here in terms of how we can display numerical information, for example, a score or a countdown or the number of lives or something like that. So it's, it's quite commonly done. We're going to assume here that we have an array of images, uh, an array of 10 images, and that array index zero corresponds to an image for the character zero. And array index one corresponds to a character for the number one, and so on all the way up to number nine. So we've got those two things aligned. And as a thinky challenge here, it should be quite quick to do, spend a couple of minutes thinking about how, if I give you an integer which holds a number, how would you 
sequence a series of image draws so that you draw out on the screen that particular number. So if it was the number 123 on the screen, I would want to draw an image for the 1, the 2 and the 3 and have that appear on the screen. So uh, I think I, we might do this in the class, but it should be quick, quick to do. Have a ponder about how you would go around doing that. And you can assume you have an array of uh, bit bumps. Let's call them digits, uh, sized from 0 up to 9 terms of bit indexes. How is it done? Very straightforward. You can see it here. You can go through this yourself. Effectively, we're using the modulus operator and we're using the, the fact that it's integer division. So we're assuming here we have an integer that we are trying to display. Using the modulus factor and dividing these things by 10, effectively that gives us a way of chopping off the least significant digit um, that we have uh, in our number. And if we're dividing an integer by 10, again, effectively, we're just chopping off that value. Uh, so integer arithmetic actually works here to us. So the particular function we have, the do loop, it will extract out uh, the least significant uh, digit in it. We can then draw that out. It will then chop it off by dividing it with 10. And we will repeat that until we run out of digits to process. Only thing to note about this, uh, I suppose the Western world, we read things and we think about things from sort of the left across to the right. In this case, we would be processing it from the least significant, the right going across to the, the left. So we need to remember about this in terms of the, the order and the sequence in which, which we draw it on screen. So that's, that's it. Key takeaways for this one here. Um, in a game, actually, if we're thinking about text or numbers, uh, we're going to be really processing them in much the same way we deal with, with our ordinary images. It's image manipulation and we'll be drawing out images either implicitly or explicitly to, to represent uh, the, the text, the, the characters, the words that we want to uh, get across within our game.